On what seemed like a normal Saturday on September 1st, 1923, turned out to be the complete opposite. On that day, the deadliest earthquake in Japanese history shook the world. The first shock hit at 11.58 a.m. around the Tokyo, Yokohama metropolitan areas with a magnitude of 7.9. How could such a thing like this happen? A 60 by 60 mile fragment of the Philippine sea plate cracked and pushed itself against the Eurasian mainland plate, releasing enormous bursts of tectonic energy. Its epicenter was in Sakami Bay off Yokohama. The saying, timing is everything, rang true for the Great Kanto earthquake as it struck right around lunchtime, as families were busy preparing food. As the earthquake hit, cooking stoves overturned, causing rampant fires coupled with broken gas mains. The jolt of the earthquake also caused the 40 foot high tsunami that destroyed 155 houses and killed 60 people. More than half of the brick buildings and one tenth of the reinforced concrete structures in the region collapsed. As chaos broke out, 38,000 of the 44,000 Tokyo residents fled to the Army Clothing Depot in Hojo for protection, but were ultimately wiped out by a fire tornado, leaving only 300 confused survivors. What's worse is the massacre that eventually occurred. Nationalist and racist rhetoric began to spread like wildfire across Japan. Survivors wanted answers and targeted Koreans for the mass destruction. They believed that they set the fires, were poisoning wells and looting ruined homes, and were planning to overthrow the government. Altogether, 6,000 Koreans and 700 Chinese mistaken for Korean were beaten to death. This became known as the Korean Massacre. All in all, the death toll was estimated to be around 142,800. Nearly 7,000 factories were destroyed, along with 121 bank head offices, 162 hospitals, and 117 primary schools. A mass amount of people left hungry, homeless, jobless, and assetless. Fuel, food, and water were hard to come by weeks after the earthquake, and the government acknowledged that they had been ill-prepared. The New Year motto, Gano Ho, cabinet declared the state of martial law of what remained the capital. This law spent to cover all of Tokyo, Kanagawa, Chiba, and Shatama, Prefectures. The government sent 52,000 troops to restore order, assess the relief and recovery efforts, and repair damaged infrastructure. The tsunami was activated in the bay that struck the island of Oshima at the stature of 12 meters and hit the Aizu and Boso Peninsula with 6 meter waves. The north shore of Sagami Bay rose permanently by almost 2 meters. Parts of the Boso Peninsula moved laterally 4.5 meters. These effects are regional. It took 10 days for stability and order to return to the region. Physical destruction characterized the scene of post-fiasco Tokyo, and the biosphere and hydrosphere systems were heavily involved and affected by the earthquake. Fascinating enough, the United States were able to raise $12 million for the victims and sent dozens of warships packed with relief supplies to Yokohama Harbor. However, despite these well manned gestures, the two countries dissipated in mutual accusations, with the Japanese expressing resentment towards the Western rescuers and demagogues in the U.S. reviewing the Japanese as ungrateful. One lesson that can be taken away from this earthquake is the importance of speedy, well-coordinated relief to save lives. Many lives were saved due to the Japanese ability to quickly communicate their state distress around the world. The Great Kanto earthquake will never be forgotten, but it will enable us to study and be better prepared for the eventual earthquakes that are bound to strike again.